Hey guys, welcome. So in this brand new tutorial, I'm going to show you um, a new web app. So I created this web app to connect to uh, my GraphQL server and I will show you how you can use Angular 6 or any other React or Vue.js framework to connect to a GraphQL server, which ultimately can, can connect to any database of your choice. So there will be two different parts in this tutorial. First part is I'm going to set up uh, the server. Second part is the client. Actually, I'm doing it other way around so that you know I can show you what actually this this app look like and what we what the end result would be. So uh, this is the client app. So basically, um, end of the this tutorial, I'll set up this GraphQL server, and basically you can have any database of your choice. You can have MongoDB or uh, SQL Server or you know, MySQL. So I'm going to include the code. Um, for two different versions, MySQL and MongoDB, and it's up to you, you know, which or whatever you want to use. So let's get started. So in this tutorial, as you can see, basically it's very simple app. What I'm going to do here, um, so suppose I will let uh, people to, you know, create their own user. So for example, um, you know, suppose you you can you can register with this app, and as you can see here, an application local storage. There's nothing in there. But once I log in, it comes back with a token. So this is a JWT token, JSON WAP token. It's a very secure token. Um, and then, you know, whatever you are going to uh, make any mutations to the database, it will use your token. So, and then, you know, you can browse to your database. So, for example, you want to update your own settings. You want to change your password. You cannot change your email anymore, but if you want to change your password and, you know, you want to, you can just quickly do that here as well. Okay. Um, Next thing is I want to show you, you know, of course it will allow you to, you know, anybody can create their own new um, uh, new user. So that's what you're going to achieve. Um, I want to show you the GraphQL side of it. So GraphQL side, again, I will, that's a part two, that's the server side. Uh, but I want to quickly show you. Actually, the good thing with using GraphQL is now it's, you can use any um, front end of your choice. You can have, um, for example, Angular, React, or... Uh, uh, plain JavaScript framework or view whatever you want. So in this case, I'm using Angular 6.1.0, uh, the latest version as of today, to connect to this one. Basically, the GraphQL server, all you need to do is like you know access this method through your front end. So let's get started. Again, I will include a link to my GitHub repository here. So basically, it's a very simple um, app. But uh, it's very important app as well. The reason is, you know, I'm going to use this code over and over and over again for different kind, kind of apps. So as you can see, my plan is like, you know, I'll be using, uh, I'm working on a lot of cloud application like HCM, CRM, Tracker, Attendance, well, supply chain. So, but everything, basically the fundamentals are same. I have to have a good, great database with good GraphQL, so, you know, very secure database, which has the cores and JWT authentication, even the social app enabled application, you know, um, which should connect to that one. It should be good looking, and as you can see, it should be mobile friendly. And at any point, if you want to make a mobile art app out of that, like, you know, you can, you can create a uh, Windows app or iOS app. I have installed this thing on iOS uh, and Android, so anything you want. So basically, that's the reason I choose in this framework. So uh, first thing first, you need to go to this GitHub repository. Just download everything, download as a zip. So actually this is, just now I did this thing. Okay, let me open my finder here. Okay, and as you can see, I just now downloaded a copy of this uh, zip. You unzip this one. And as you can see, copy all of these things, create a folder here, GraphQL, and paste it here. That's all you need to do. Second thing is, once you have this installed, okay, um, open any command prompt window here, okay. Shoot. Sorry, I'm going to open a new command prompt window here, okay. And then browse to to this directory, say GraphQL and CD into, what was that, client, and then Angular, okay. And now let me do a NS. At this point, just hit M NPM install. I'm not going to hit that because it's going to take like, you know, a few minutes, but all you need to do NPM install. And once this is done, all you need to do is ng sub. That's pretty much it. And that's exactly what I'm doing in the second command prompt, as you can see. I just hit an ng sub and my, my app is running here. This is the client side. So it may not work because again, I wanted to show you the functionality first. Uh, without server, of course, you know, it will run that, but it will give you a lot of error. 
so and you're not going to like that so first thing is you know to watch my second part first and implement the server side first and then come back to this one um, but again I'm doing it other way around so that you know people can see what we are building and you know it will make more sense once you see things in action here okay so basically this all this app is doing in accessing those functions is saying okay login query and you know check user query exists means like you know suppose I'm adding a new user first is checked you know user is already there or not um, so and then you can see mutation add user m so it lets you uh, user create a new user it lets you update your credential but remember so th this is a complete uh, you know authentication and authorization tutorial authorization means suppose if you you cannot update your own roles so suppose you are a fee admin or you are an admin or you are employee or your payroll and your admin decides okay you know what only admin can update other people's role so these methods are written for them obviously these methods only I'm showing there um, because for uh, developers this method will not be available to anyone um, other than developers in production okay so if you are watching this tutorial uh, just to deploy something you can stop here but if you are a you can and then you can continue to my second tutorial uh, followed by this one but if you are a developer um, you can you know you should listen into what I'm going to do a code uh, walkthrough again so again, it's not possible for me to do a code along uh, because there's too much code. So I'm instead I'm doing a code uh, walkthrough. So let me just explain you how my code is written here. And again, it's only for developers, uh, developers only. So as you can see, it's a very simple app. Um, like I, I won't call it a boilerplate, but you know because you know there are a lot of things I included here, like you know, all these fancy icons, material, and you know you can see all the uh, social icons, little help I included here and security, like you know, couple in, in the form you can quickly send an email to the user. Um, feel free to use that, it's up, totally up to you and I'll tell you how you can customize all of that. So go to the environment file environment.ts. So as you can see FB link, LinkedIn, GitHub, email ID, all of these things, you see all these links, right now these are pointing to this. So you can go ahead and change it as per you. So you know, obviously you don't want people to, you know, unless you want to, I'll be happy to share my Facebook link here. Okay. So same thing, same thing goes with the email, and this is your GraphQL server. Again, this is the server. That's the only thing you need to connect to your backend. Actually, this is rather middleware. So this is the middleware you will get to connect to that one. Email API. Right now I'm using this. This is my personal email API. So guys, please do not use it. Um, well, you know. But I'm, I'm using, you know, suppose they want to send that email to, you know, so this is actually what it does. It takes that API and send that email using my personal email ID. So please change this one before you start using that one. Production settings are almost the same. Okay. Now in app module, as you can see, um, there are a lot of codes for there. And bas but basically, um, let me go through the app routing module. App routing module is, uh, so you can see. There are a couple of things about us. About us is a very static page, and um, well, I you don't even need that, you know. It's like, but again, as you can see, about us is uh, it's a static page. Login, sign up, setting. These are the three different main pages: login page, sign up page, and setting page. Everything else is uh, is is not required. I have written an auth guard here. So suppose auth guard, what it does? Suppose you are not logged in, um, so it will you know if you're not logged in, it will throw you back to the login. And basically, you can see where my auth guard is. All it's doing is checking a token and saying, okay, if token is not there, throw him back to the um, login page. So even if somebody is trying to hack into your this one, don't worry about that because you know I'm taking each and every, so I'm taking token and I validate at the server itself. So don't worry about if somebody you know try to manipulate this token and uh, they are trying to access some other database. It's not going to work because I'm re-securing that. Re-securing means like I'm again validating use each individual your user ID you know with every request. So let me show you how I do that. So in app dot module as you can see, these are all the Apollo Apollo setup. So I have included HTTP header. This actually I'm not using a lot of these things, but you know, and the set context and the environment thing. Basically, what it does in set context, that's where I'm taking the token and I'm, and I'm putting it to the authorization header level. So even if somebody tried to hack into your token, uh, don't worry about that. I will cover that in the second part, how I'm taking everybody's token, taking their ID and figuring out like, okay, if the per person has the appropriate role or not. So even if you try to, you know, somebody tried to send some data, which they are not supposed to, it's not going to work. 
so um, well it took me like you know it took me one month trust me guys to get this code working so, but that's really that's what i am doing and then i'm you know just um, attaching it to every single http you are doing from this app and you know attaching that token here and passing it to the server so that's that's the only thing it does next thing is that's how you set up the apollo actually Apollo's um, client library here. Okay, sorry, couple of more things. So in your provider, you know, you can basically, very simple code. Um, that's what you can set it up here. Okay. Now, next thing is I want to show you to the, let's go to the login page, okay? So for example, login.component.ts. So basically, I am, all I'm doing, you know, I'm checking if the user is already logged in or not. If you're logged in, you are not going to see this. Uh, so here, I, I'm not logged in here. So see, it will throw me back here. Uh, let me just say, whoops. Okay, now once you're logged in, it's going. It's not going to show you that login page again because you are already logged in and a token is already there. Okay, and then, um, so basically, all it does, okay, is is going to the backend service, and is going to the login user. So let me show you what this login user is. This is where actually the magic is happening. This is my backend service here and login user. So this is all the API is written here. So login user, it takes the form data, it calls the Apollo and it accesses this query login user queue and it passes that email and password, you know, what I'm, you know, put this from user ID here. What it does, it accesses this query login user queue and it's accessing that GraphQL API and it's passing this value and getting the, getting a token in the, uh, in the reward. Once it's get the token, uh, why didn't it? Okay, once it gets back the token, it set it up, it stores it at the local storage. That's very simple code. And if it doesn't get a token, it says, okay, user and radiant path. It will get the exact error from the server. So good thing with this architecture is your front end is very simple and you have to keep it that way. So suppose you have a different front end developers, you, you don't need to, you know, be involved. You just tell them, okay, this is my API, go and develop, you know, use angular or react or view whatever you want you know just develop this code so uh, let me show you one more mutation here uh, so for example sign up as you can see sign up code what it's doing is saying okay i'm creating a user and again it's taking all those three values here um, email password and username is going to that you know uh, calling that create user mutation here again everything i've written in the service there's nothing in the component here so anytime if you want you can change it here so here you can see I'm, I can update or create a user here. You can pass the exact query. Good thing is, you know, again, I appreciate the GraphQL because it lets you um, pass exactly what's needed and it no more garbage, okay? And it receives the only what is required by your app. It doesn't receive all the garbage, okay? So you can write like, you know, all the queries um, and the data. You can, you can define your data what is expected to see. So that's and in a very secure way. So that's the thing I like about it. So in the server side, uh, I have explained the code, how authorization and authentication is happening. So, and I'm, trust me guys, I'm using course, I'm using JWT authentication, and I'm using authorization, role-based authorization. So everything is happening at the server level. Um, again, what else I can tell you here? So let me show you the mutation, okay? So as you can see, I create a user and it gets back to that value. And as you can see, you know, so suppose the user ID already exists. So in that case, uh, from the server itself, I can pass a value and saying, you know what, email is, in this case, I'm just passing blank. So it says, okay, you know what, the email is blank, that means ID taken is false, that means ID already exists. And then, you know, you can go to the, and you can see ID taken. What I'm doing with ID taken is, um, ID taken. As you can see, I'm just like saying, okay, user ID is already, I'm showing this error that ID, um, ID is already taken. So very simple app, but it's um, very meaningful and very powerful in my opinion. Uh, and I'm going to use this code for a lot of other different application I'm working on. And um, uh, I'll be sharing all the codes with you guys. Um, again, if you have any questions, anything you want to discuss or any, again, guys, this, this is not the perfect code. Uh, there's no such thing as the perfect code. So if you come across with something better or like, you know, if you want to update this one, please contribute to my GitHub repository. And, you know, I'll be happy to uh, give you the proper credit to that one. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Please watch for the second part, how I've set up the server to, um, to make this thing, uh, to make this application work. Okay, thank you very, thank you very much.